So let's talk about DNA, right? DNA is a nucleic acid. That's what the N and the A stand for. If you remember deoxyribo nucleic acid, deoxyribonucleic acid. So the N and the A stand for nucleic acid. And what is a nucleic acid? Well, nucleic acids are long strands of nucleotides joined together. So if we think about, you know, making DNA, it's not just one long structure that starts at one end and then the molecule is made and continues being created, right? It's actually smaller pieces that get joined together. And those smaller pieces are called nucleotides. So DNA is actually composed of over, uh, you know, in humans, over 3 billion nucleotides. Of course, smaller organisms, let's say E. coli, a bacterium, it has more like in the millions of nucleotides joined together. Uh, but in humans, it's over 3 billion nucleotides that create our DNA. And DNA is a nucleic acid. So the nucleotides are the smaller pieces that get bonded together to create the bigger structure. And the bigger structure is called a nucleic acid. So you can kind of think of it like, like a train, right? If you're sitting at a, a train track and a train goes by, the whole thing is the train. And it can be really long sometimes. But that train is actually made of individual railroad cars, right? And those railroad cars get joined together to create the longer structure, which is the train. So in this analogy, those individual railroad cars are like the nucleotides they get joined together to form the entire long structure. And that's the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, so this is, uh, you know, a graphic of DNA. And we're used to seeing it. It's, it's this helix. In fact, it's a double helix because there are two strands in here, right? We can see here's one strand that I'm outlining with the mouse. And then there's actually another strand over here. Okay, so it's a double helix because these wind into this spiral-like structure that we call a helix. But that's the whole thing we're looking at there. In this cartoon, we're looking at a piece of DNA and there's actually many nucleotides that are joined together in this piece of DNA. So it's really important to understand what a nucleotide is. It's that basic building block, right? Like in our train, it's an individual railroad car, okay? So in a piece of DNA, it's made up of nucleotides. And this is a cartoon I put together just to sort of show you what's found in a nucleotide. And in a nucleotide, okay, we have a phosphate group. And that phosphate group is bonded, is attached to a sugar that has five carbons. And then on the other side of the sugar is bonded what we call a nitrogenous base, which sometimes you'll hear is called a nucleobase or just a base. So this is the structure of a nucleotide. Now, just as a reminder, a phosphate group um, is a phosphorus atom that's bonded to four oxygen molecules. Okay, you can see three of those are with a single bond and one of the oxygens is bonded to the phosphorus with a double bond. So that's a phosphate group, okay? Now, again, this is the nucleotide we're looking at. The phosphate group is bonded to a five-carbon sugar. And uh, so sugars have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in them. And in this case, the sugar is known as deoxyribose. Now, maybe let's think of some other sugars, names of sugars that you've heard of. Maybe sucrose, like table sugar or glucose, or fructose, like high fructose corn syrup, right? What you might notice about sucrose, glucose, fructose, is they all end in O-S-E. Sugars end in O-S-E. And so that's a reminder for us, this deoxyribo sounds very chemically, um, but it ends in O-S-E. So we know it's a sugar and it has five carbons in it. Uh, let's say glucose, for instance, has six carbons. Deoxyribose has five carbons. And this is where the name deoxyribonucleic acid comes from, because DNA has the sugar deoxyribose in it. 
Now, just as a side note, when they put the whole thing together, just to make it flow better, they drop the S and the E from deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, I guess it would have been a little harder to say deoxyribose nucleic acid. So they drop the S and the E so it flows better deoxyribonucleic acid, and it's called that because the sugar found in the nucleotides of DNA is deoxyribose. Now on the other side of that sugar is a base, and uh, it's called a nitrogenous base, or like I said, you might just hear nucleobase or base, but I like to say nitrogenous base because it reminds you that we're going to find a lot of nitrogens in it. So this is a nucleotide. And again, in human DNA, we're going to have billions of these nucleotides that become bonded together to form our nucleic acid, our DNA. This is a nucleotide. Now, here is our nucleotide. And there are four different bases that can be found. So we actually have four different flavors of nucleotides that are found in DNA. And the difference between those nucleotides is the type of the base that's there. So all four are going to have that phosphate group bonded to the sugar, deoxyribose, and then it can be bonded to one of four different bases. And you're probably going to recognize these, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Those are the four different bases that can be found in the nucleotides of DNA. So again, when you hear something like guanine, well, guanine isn't the entire uh, nucleotide. Guanine is the base that's found in the nucleotide, okay? So when we're talking about adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine, A, G, C, and T, as we like to abbreviate them, we're really talking about the bases that are found. And there's only one base per nucleotide, but there are four different flavors, four different types of nucleotides because we can have nucleotides that have adenine as the base, guanine as the base, cytosine as the base, or thymine as the base. So this is the general structure of a nucleotide. So we have our phosphate group, our five carbon sugar, which we know is deoxyribose, and we have our one of four different nitrogenous bases that are found there. Now, this is just the uh, line structure of a, um, this is just the structural drawing of a nucleotide. I didn't want to throw this right out at you because it looks like a lot of chemistry, right? Which can be intimidating. I absolutely get that. And that's why I gave you sort of that little drawing here on the side. But now that we understand the different parts of it, we certainly can like break it down and understand how this works, right? So here's our phosphate group right here. We know that's going to be the phosphorus atom bonded to four oxygens. And then this part in the center, that's deoxyribose. That is the structure of the sugar that's found in a DNA nucleotide. And I know you're thinking like, wait, you said there were five carbons in sugar in deoxyribose. Like, where are the carbons here? It doesn't look like there's any carbons. And well, when we're using these structural drawings in chemistry or these line bond drawings, they remove the carbons. So just to make it look easier, and most of the hydrogens too are removed because there's lots of hydrogens in here as well. Um, so anytime you really see a crick or you see like a little bend in the molecule, there's going to be a carbon there. It's just that they don't put it in because there's lots of carbons here and it would get sort of intimidating to look at. So we can count those different carbons. Okay, here's one carbon is here, two is here, three is here at this bend. The next bend is four carbons. And then the fifth carbon is actually sticking up over here. Okay, that's the fifth carbon. And it's, that's where uh, the phosphate group binds is at the fifth carbon of this sugar, okay? So even though they're not drawn here, there is a carbon here, 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 and here. Those are our five carbons. And you notice there's an oxygen here um, as well at the top of the deoxyribose molecule. Now at that first carbon right here, that's where the base gets bonded to into the nucleotide. And so we can see this space here, right? We see it's, you know, just generally looking at a structure, what do we see? We see there's some single bonds, some double bonds. It's made up of two rings uh, of different atoms here. And of course, as promised, 
it's a nitrogenous base. So you see all those ends. There's a lot of nitrogen in, in this base, in the bases, and that's why you call them nitrogenous bases. So that's sort of breaking down the structure of a nucleotide and going into a little bit more detail about what we see chemically in the different parts. And why do we care? Well, to really understand how these nucleotides get bonded together to create the big structure, the big molecule of the nucleic acid, we sort of have to understand the different parts of the nucleotide. Now we talked about how there are four different nitrogenous bases, four different bases that are found in DNA. Again, here's our nucleotide uh, cartoon over on the right. And we're talking about the base, um, the part all the way on the right of this drawing. There are four different types of nitrogenous bases that can be found in DNA. And maybe you've heard of them, right? Cytosine, thymine, guanine, and adenine. These are the different bases that are found in DNA nucleotides. And we're not going to memorize the structures here. You know, we're simplifying it today. We're not going into all of the chemical details necessarily. But if you just take a step back and you look at these bases, what do you notice about them? What do you notice about the structure of them? Yeah, maybe you're like, well, cytosine and thymine, they're made up of one ring structure. Um, and guanine and adenine, they actually have two rings that are stuck together in their structures. And yeah, we see nitrogen in all of these molecules. So nitrogenous bases, they have nitrogen in them as well. And we can categorize them into sort of different kinds of groups based on their structure. Now, cytosine and thymine, they're made up of one ring only. Okay, you can see that the uh, the atoms form a ring structure. And so cytosine and thymine are derived from what we call pyrimidines. So we call these the pyrimidines. And again, that just means it's a structure that has, uh, you know, a single ring to it. Now, guanine and adenine, they have two different rings bonded together within those bases. So those are called purines. Now, again, why do we care about all these details when we're talking about DNA nucleotides? Well, later on, we're going to find that when the bases pair with each other from one strand to the other strand of DNA, it's going to be a pyrimidine that pairs with a purine. And just as a little preview, cytosine is always going to pair with guanine and thymine is always going to base pair with adenine. So we sort of keep this in mind to really understand, um, you know, which ones pair with each other and how that's going to work in the structure of DNA. We're not going to talk about it today, but RNA has an additional base other than what's seen here. Instead of thymine, RNA is actually going to have a base called uracil. So in DNA, we have cytosine, thymine, guanine, and adenine. But in RNA, we have cytosine, uracil, guanine, and adenine. And I mentioned this just so you're aware of it, but also I have lots of little mnemonics that help me remember these things, and maybe they might help you too, even though they're a little bit silly. And I remember that thymine looks a lot like uracil. So uracil is another pyrimidine. So our pyrimidines in nucleic acids are going to be cytosine, thymine, and uracil. And uh, the word pyrimidine looks a lot like a pyramid. And so in my head, I remember that pyramids are cut from big stones. Okay. C-U-T, cut from big stones. And C, U, and T are the three pyrimidines that we find in uh, nucleic acids, okay, in nucleotides. So cytosine, uracil, and thymine, those are the pyrimidines. So that leaves the other two, guanine and adenine, to be the purines. That's how I remember that and thought I'd share just in case it can help you as well. So these are the four different bases that are found in DNA, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. Now remember, here is our cartoon of a uh, nucleotide. And if we switch that out with the structural drawing of that nucleotide, we see that there is one of those bases 
that is in this particular structural drawing. Now, looking at this base, right away, you see it has two rings. So you know it's a purine rather than a pyrimidine. And we know our purines are guanine and adenine. So can you identify in this structural drawing um, of a nucleotide, which of the bases is found in this one? Okay, well, let's see, looking over here, we see a lot of nitrogens in adenine, a lot of nitrogens in guanine. Okay, but looking at the different structure here, well, there's a nitrogen coming off of this second uh, loop here. Okay, in adenine, there's an oxygen that comes off from that ring structure here. So in guanine. So if we look over at our structure, well, it's the nitrogen that is coming from this second ring. And so in this case, this particular base found in this nucleotide that we're looking at is adenine. See how that all comes together? Thanks for watching. And if you found this at all of use, please like it and subscribe to my page and that will help other people find this information as well.